I'm Elian and I'm the Liaison Librarian for Life Sciences and I hope a few among you are also coming from Life Sciences. I want to learn a little bit more about PubMed in a very short time. So we'll do a first encounter of PubMed. In this uh, 10 minutes more or less, you will get to know PubMed and discover its usefulness for scientific research. And at the end, we will also know how to create an account and make use of it for your specific research needs that you have. So let's start right away. What is PubMed? It's a free resource and it's supporting whatever search or retrieval needs you might have uh, in biomedical and life sciences literature. So there are many, many advantages for PubMed. It's huge. There are about uh, 330 millions of entries in there. It's reliable and a trusted resource because what is provided by PubMed is coming from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, which is based at the US National Library of Medicine, which is then part of the National Institute of Health in the United States. So you can see it's a highly trusted source and everything that is in there is re reliable. And what is also cool, it's actually free to use. Whatever is in there is free. And I already said it, but it's good to repeat it. It's specific to medicine and health. So it's a database that has really entries in a specific field of research, which might be useful when you're only looking for contents in this field. Another very big advantage of PubMed is that it works based on a controlled vocabulary, which is called the medical subject headings. What is a controlled vocabulary? This means that people are checking whether these terms are actually the right terms, the so-called validated terms in a specific field, and they make the database mapping it to your search words that you're entering. We'll see it later in the demo as well. So it is, when you're doing a basic search, um, it will search for your terms and it will look both for keywords that might map your term, and it will also match it to this control vocabulary, which is super useful. Then other advantages of PubMed, it contains a search builder, which means that you can put together whatever piece of search snippets you might have, your specific keywords that you have already been putting together. And then you also have a search history, so you can come back for months to find again what you have been looking for before. And this means when you use PubMed, you can actually build and carry out quite complex searches. And in this search, you can include mesh terms, so control terms from the respective fields in life sciences. And you then can have very uh, most important results. So the last advantage, you can also create a free account and this free account will even give you more features and possibilities whenever needed. So I would suggest that we take a look and that we do a, a short demo. And if you want to do it alongside with me, just do it alongside with me. Or then you can also just listen to myself. So here is the new interface of PubMed. It has changed recently and it will also change quite a lot in the future but this is the most visible change that one can see. You can see that I'm already locked as Elian Bloomer. At the moment, this does not make any difference. Just assume that you would start with this interface. Let's assume you want to look for cancer and immunology. And you're quite advanced because you know now that there is a controlled vocabulary. So you go directly to this mesh to this controlled vocabulary database. And you start, let's take it easy, with cancer. And you can see that you have many entries, but probably the most important one is the first one. This is the entry for cancer. And the control term for it is neoplasms. And if you take a look now at what is happening here, at all this entry, you find subheadings that you can link to your first term that you have been looking for. 
you can also see all the different synonyms that I could have used in my search field, like tumor or cancers, and MeSH would have always found this entry, neoplasms. And you can also see that you have subheadings that are part of neoplasms, so different kind of cancers. Here, for instance, the kists or hamartomas or, or, or. Okay, I talked to you about the search builder. So first of all, let's say we want this term cancer neoplasm for the controlled term. And I add it to the search builder, went quite quickly as you could see. And then I said, I'm also interested in immuno immunology linked to cancer. And I also add it to the search builder. Let's assume I do it with an R. And then, which is nice, I can look directly in the PubMed basis, which means, I remember you, it's 30 millions of different contents. So it's not so surprising that we have like 200,000 results of it and we can't really read it. What would you do? Well, you know that you have to reduce your research that you have been doing. And this I will do here in the specific example with the advanced search, because you can see the PubMed actually registers your searches that you have been doing and that you can check what has been happening technically behind the scene of PubMed. Okay, he has been looking for two mesh terms. Let's assume you want to reduce it. So you can again add this first search and you could say, I add CAR T cells. And then you do again a search. And you can see it already has reduced quite easily and quite a lot the results because you have added another term. You could either now go and filter with different filters that you have here, or you go again, as I did, into this advanced search box. You take a look at what has been happening behind the scenes, what has PubMed been doing, and whether it fits to your needs or not. So here you can see it has been looking in all fields, in mesh terms for cells, so it could map it to them, and maybe also in CAR-T as all fields. If we go back now, let's assume that those two results would fit your need and you would like to have them for later on. So you can either send it to clipboard, which is for this session, or you can also send it to your bibliography. For this now, you would need an account for PubMed. Very easy to build an account. Just subscribe with an email and your name and then you get a link to accept and that's it. And then you can say, I add it. So you don't see it at the moment what has been happening. And you could also create a collection. Let's say you create a new collection, which is called CAR T cell. For this as well, you need an account. And it has been added to this collection. What does that mean? Let's go now to the account, assuming that you already have an account. And here you can see you have a dashboard. So PubMed also provides you with a dashboard. And here you can see that I have this collection that has been created, CAR T cell, and I could also add other resources, other records from PubMed that would be useful for me. I have my bibliography. So if I want to manage my bibliography. I can see that bibliography means it really gives me the citation style. I could also change this citation style. And then there are other interesting things like the saved searches or my recent activities and they keep, uh, they are here for six months. What you also can do in your personal account is that you can manage the filters. Remember the filters were on the left hand side and you could see and reduce your different uh, results that you had. So it is really useful to have an account in PubMed because it helps you going even more into the details that you would need. 
I come back to my presentation. So even when you have PubMed and the dashboard that helps you uh, going straight to your needs, don't forget to keep track of your searches. You might also listen to the coffee lectures around the search equation that has already been going on and to know more how to keep track of these searches because after six months, it probably is gone. And that's it from my side. So I hope you have many questions and I hope I could give you a short insight into PubMed. Thank you very much.